Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 325 Aussie Tech Heads. How are you this week? It is 24th of January, nearly Australia Day. Happy Australia Day for uh, whenever it is. Monday. Monday. Monday, the holiday. Good stuff. All right, so uh, thanks for joining us. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Aussie Tech Heads Hosting, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. You want uh, fast, affordable, professional hosting. Come and check us out. Uh, growing every day, so it's, it's really great. And for those of you who have passed the, the name on to uh, your friends and, and uh, acquaintances, thank you, because uh, it, uh, that's sometimes it get, comes back to me, so I appreciate that. All right, um, what is happening this week? We've got uh, had some audio issues tonight, so the podcast is going to be a little bit rushed, unfortunately. So hopefully it doesn't feel uh, too bad uh, there for you, for you guys. But um, all right, but let's get the panel in and uh, let's get started. Uh, Eric and Shane is with us tonight. How are you doing? Good, mate. How are you going? Good. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, okay, so now, hang on, and we'll just have a little, one little pause for a second. Hang on, just one little pause. Just let me pl- just let me play that back. Sorry, it just doesn't look like it's recording loud enough. Let's get started. Uh, Eric and Shane is with us tonight. Hey, oh, that's all right. Jeez, bloody stupid shit. Some some weeks it records with really high waves. Then tonight it's just <laughs> everything's shit Thursdays. All right. Okay. Uh. Yeah, sorry, we're we're back. We just had another little interruption. So uh, Shane and Eric are with us tonight. Uh, so how are you guys? Uh, Shane, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm well. Um, how are you guys going? Yes, yes, good, thank you. And Eric, how are you going? I'm well, thank you, sir. Good. How are you going? And welcome back. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh, had we'll, a good holiday. <laughs> that's good. Will can't be with us tonight. He was here earlier, but we had some uh, pretty drastic audio issues, and uh, when he logged off. They went, so I think they were Will's issues. So, um, so we just decided to do a, a a show anyway, just with us three, and we'll see if we can get that sorted out by next week. So, pretty much, uh, we're on a tight schedule. So, we're just going to run through the news and uh, some brief comments and see how we go. So, I'll start if you like. I'll yep. start with the A Triple C urge to probe storage surface claims. Now, I don't know if any of you guys saw this through the week, but uh, what's happening is that you know the 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 surface has been been uh, is being sold thirty two gig and sixty four gig, but Choice, you know our friendly Choice magazine, the uh, consumer indeed, yeah, consumer yep. dudes. Well, they've found that only sixteen gig of the usable space of the thirty two gig, and the forty five gig of usable space of sixty four gig. Uh, Hang on a minute. Usable. What what's taking up sixteen gigabytes? Yeah, the the OS or something. What, what, a, <laughs> what terrible OS and to take up sixteen gigs of a tablet? Well, so, oh my god! Yes, yeah, so, or something something's taking it up. So who knows what it is? But uh, well, it's probably viruses and spamware and God knows what <laughs> being, win, being Windows. <laughs> probably, probably. But um, yeah, but that's pretty that's pretty bad, eh? Like you know, you get, that's bad. Yeah, you're getting the That's 32 really gig bad. tablet and you're only getting 16 usable. But uh, yeah, so Choice has got on the bandwagon. It compared the, surf, the Surface to two of the competing products, the Google Nexus 7, uh, which offered a usable space of 27.33 out of 32 gig, and, uh, and the Apple iPad 2, which has 13.34 gig of space available to the end user uh, on the 16 gig model. Yeah, so, they only take up two gigs operating system. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I'm not sure. Look, I haven't done the test myself. So I'm oh, not, look, it's probably you know. true. Clunky, typical clunky. They just put everything on there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's what's happening over there. So, but yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, look, I think the look. I've got another story. Might as well just continue on with it while we're talking about Surface, because there is another Surface story. I think I had one. Well, anyway. Yes, Australia a, misses out on the first Surface Pro units. Is that the one you were talking about? That's the one, yes. The uh, the yep. Surface Pro will be on sale in the US and Canada from the 9th of February. And uh, it will be available in 64 and 128 gig models. So starting from 850 Australian. Woo. Australia. Gee, that's pricey. Woo. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, look, look if they can make it work, like it's, that'd be great. Australia was one of the several countries to get the Surface RT on release day, but Australia has been left out of the first round of these shipments. So the Perf- Harvey Norman is expecting the Surface Pro to be in the stores soon after the launch. So uh, still, you know why we have to wait. One. We have to wait because of the choice article, I reckon. <laughs> Maybe they've ruined it for us. <laughs> right, could be right. I don't know what they're going to do about it, but I think you could be right. But look, I've seen, uh, I've seen, uh, look, a mate of mine came in the other day and he had a Samsung top of the Wazza uh, laptop, Windows 8, backlit keyboard, uh, you know, the, the mouse pad was sense, uh, like Mac sensitive, you know, scroll, uh, scroll like tap down yeah, to scroll yeah. and zoom and pinch yeah. and zoom yeah. on the mouse pad. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful machine. Was it an Ultrabook? Is that what you mean? Yes. A light, light, yeah. Yes. So very quite nice. The Ultrabooks are quite nice. Yeah, this thing was. Very thin. They're like the MacBook Airs, but. But that's, just don't put Windows 8 on it. That's all. Yeah, this thing was um, this was a ni- uh, this was a nice machine, very nice. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking that, that look the Surface Pro. Well, for me, I'm going to get something that's going to be laptop and um, uh, tablet. Tablet. Um, what this guy was saying as well is some people were having issues with the the keyboard on the Surface. How you know how how you fold it back and and so you can um, yeah. So it lets, sits on the desk. He's, he was saying yep. that you know a lot of people well they don't they don't want that angle all the time. You know, like a laptop, yes. you move the screen backwards and forwards. You don't want yes, that. Yes, it's right to suit you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he said he found that, like, you know, sometimes like you're sitting on a chair and you put it on your lap. Well, after an hour, it starts to dig in and you need to... Or you sit differently because depending yeah. on, you know, you're tired, you're not tired. That's right. That's right. So uh, he's... um. Yeah, he he wasn't. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he wasn't excited about it. But he's had this ultra book. Jeez, it was a nice machine. And look, if they can if they can bring out something like that at a bit more of an affordable price, uh, look, I'd probably. I don't mind paying a thousand bucks for an ultra book, but I'm not paying one for a Surface. No, but the, the, this ultra book was more like two, two grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a lot. It's, it's big. It's big money. But uh, yeah, but anyway, um, that's that's what he did. So that's yeah. So I, I would wait. I would like something that was. Uh, keyboard detachable, uh, maybe not the Surface type keyboard, but a proper laptop type keyboard. We'll see how we go. Yeah, see, see how it all pans yeah. out. But anyway, well, if it's got Bluetooth, you should be able to do it. Oh, even and, that, you know, yeah. attach any keyboard to it. Well, maybe you could instead of having it attach electronically, maybe you could just have it attach, uh, say, mechanically, so it's not going to you know fall apart when you put it on your lap. And but it's yeah. it, then it's Bluetooth connected. Yeah, know? yeah. So rather than yeah, but um. I had, a, I had a swipe, I think, last week at the Windows Surface and uh, in uh, in Domain, I think it was. And look, I wasn't impressed by the, the lag. You know, I had a bit of a lag. When was it a pretty bad, was it? Yeah, when you swap. Well, like if I used the calculator, you'd push the number and you yeah. could tell it wasn't happening straight away. It was, a, you know, yeah. just off. But you, you know, when noticeable, you, noticeable lag. You know, when you watch Not a, like the iPad where it's instantaneous. That's right. Yeah, you know, that's what, when you watch a, uh, a show, the lip sync is out. Could only be a tiny yeah. bit, but you can tell. Yeah. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right, Shane. Um, yes. Wh- what are, What are we up to this week? You got a couple? Um, I do have a couple. I think we'll start with the one on the top of the list, Carly's Law. Uh, basically, this is a story of um, a girl that unfortunately got murdered because um, she organised to catch up with someone she met online, and Ooh. as a result, they. Uh, yeah, as a result, they've now implemented a, a law called Carly's Law, which basically says that even if a predator doesn't necessarily do anything bad to anyone, but if they lie with the intent to meet somebody, that in itself is a criminal offence. Yeah, so, if you lie in order to lure someone, yeah, yes, right. which, you w- which would, not, would not normally do that, then, yeah, crime over. Yeah. So you can still lie about your age for other reasons, but yeah, if you lie with the intent to meet somebody, then you're now breaking the law. But how how yeah. how is that going to actually be proven and and all and all this? Well, you catch the guy. He says he was sixteen and he's forty four. That's there's your proof. Yeah, but he said, <laughs> yeah, well, it's not illegal to lie about my age. I, I didn't mean I wasn't intending that lie to to uh, eventually lead to a meet. Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If well, you're in a you chat room to, and you're talking you to a 16 year old girl and you're 40, the, number one, that raises suspicion, even if you told her you're 40. Hmm. Well, I just, if I you did, did, 
she'd yeah. she'd hang up on you. Well, I, hopefully, it's one of these one of these rules that have just been brought in uh, to to catch the the scum. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like you get you get, you get you you or me. No, it's, it's, I think it's specific to this to this area. Mm. What, as in to, to <laughs> online chat? No, it wouldn't apply to you know if you're down in the pub and you're forty and single. And you're trying to you're trying to chat up a twenty five year old and so you tell her you're thirty five, that's fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're there. You're not luring yeah. her anywhere. Yeah. You met her, she's off, she wanted to talk to you and you were laughing, having a good time getting on, but you didn't tell her you were age. That's that's no crime. Mm. Everyone does that. But say say you were talking to a person online and and you lied about your age, but then eventually down the track you met just for totally innocent purposes, like say you, yeah. you met because uh, she wanted a tax return done or something. Um, but, the, but, you know, where do you stand there? Like, well, then I think you... it begs the question, if it was if it was completely uh, innocent okay. and I had no ulterior motives, why would I lie to her in the first place? Mm, yeah. If someone met me online and said, are you an accountant? I'd say, yeah. And she said, oh, by the way, how old are you? And I told her. I tell the truth. Yeah. Because well, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not planning on bloody doing anything. So I've got, yeah. you know, you've got nothing to hide. There's no reason to lie. No, that's right. Look, I think the law, I think this one is just here to... Um, it's just here as a like as a maybe the last backstop to ping someone if you if we get really desperate <laughs> if you know what i mean if the yeah look it's 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 yeah you're right it's just a, a last minute defense if you like but i think at the end of the day you're not going to stop creeps because creeps will always get around it because they that's what they do yeah and i think it's about it's about education 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 you've got kids you just sit them down the minute they start getting interested in social media or chat forums and whatnot, and you sit them there and you tell them, yeah. this is what it's like out there, you know, and you don't, you don't sugarcoat it. You tell them. I've told, I've talked to my two oldest kids. Yeah. You don't sugarcoat it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I said the same thing. I say, um, look, you, you don't talk to people you don't know. I said, there's people out there. They want to hurt you. Like they, they, yeah. they, they want. They look for people to hurt. And That's right. You just keep. I tell them. Yep. Never give. Never tell them. The three golden rules. Never tell them your age. Yep. Because, you know, creepos get off on depending on what age you are. Creepos, um, yes. Right. Never tell them your age. Never tell them where you live and never tell them what school you go to. No, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, one of the first things people, I mean, I'm going back a while, but when chat was the, the thing, one of the first things people ask you, and they do it in kind of, you know, abbreviated form, they go, uh, age, sex, location. Yeah. None of your business. Yeah. 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 That's right. So and, and the other golden rule I tell my kids: if you're on Facebook, you know, when the first time you get on Facebook, do not be friends with anyone you've never met in real life. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's simple. Yeah. So, uh, well, my kids aren't old enough for Facebook yet, so I'm not sure what uh, what age. Oh, I'm look, by the time about. they're old enough, mate, Facebook will be gone and buried. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but yeah, you look at that. It's a big nasty world out there, and uh, you got to keep your eye on things. Um. So. That's right. Yeah. So that's right. All right, uh, Eric. What what have you been digging up this week? I have been digging up. Um, well, I've got a non-Apple story here, which I'll leave because we're running short. Um, I've got the the Apple released its results today. Apparently, they were, they were less uh, than. Quarter- uh, no, well, that's what I thought. It was a big hoopla. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is what I don't like about journalists. The he- the headline grabber. Apple's. You know, bloody, you know, off. it's on the nose and stock drops. And everyone's thinking, oh, they must have had a bad quarter. Mm. But Apple has just announced its best quarter ever. But the stock is taking a pounding on Wall Street, according to this article. Apple announced earnings for the first quarter of 2013 of $54.5 billion in sales, right? Yep. That's in one quarter. Google just hit $50 billion in sales for the year. Oh, sorry, for the quarter. They just hit at 50. Apple have been doing 50 billion for quite some time. That's and a net massive. profit of 13 billion. That's a lot of money. Just 13 like, billion for a quarter. Just sit down by yourself in a nice, quiet little room and just and think about those zeros. how much is what was it, 50 billion, 15 billion. That's 200 billion a year, effectively. How much? 50 billion? Yeah, that's a lot of money. That's a lot, that's of, a money. lot of money. So, but that's it. The stock is down more than 4% in after hours trading because Wall Street is worried that Apple's phenomenal growth is slowing. Um, well, in, the, you know, in a comment here is, don't you love how a record-breaking quarter is still considered an ouch, you know, you know, you know a worry? Yeah. Well, do you, do you think that the iPhones, that they haven't really in, reinvented themselves enough 
you know, like you'd still be happy with a 4S, really. Um, like, look, I like the weight of the iPhone 5 compared to the mm. 4S. But, so but but it's, that's wise, a minor thing. Yeah. It's not revolutionary. It's a minor yeah. thing. But that's what Apple are good at. For 30 years, they've been good at making slight incremental changes that actually make a difference. A small difference, but a difference nevertheless. And that's what they're good at. Now, whether or not that sort of gloss is wearing off and people are starting to think, well, you know, big think, deal, possibly. I think, uh, I think, like a lot of people, I was a little bit disappointed with no NFC in the iPhone 5. I, I know that's where everything's going. Maybe they've held it back for a future... A future well, if uh, Apple tend to do that. They don't put anything in their phones or their products unless they know it's going to take off and it's going to be useful. Mm, yeah. Otherwise, it's, it's just a, like a, an appendage you don't need, like, an, you know, like your appendix. Yeah. Um, what is that for anyway? <laughs> it, used to, it used to be for digestive system in Neanderthal times. but If you ate grass um, or something. And it, yeah. So, you know, if, if you go to um, the really bad parts of the Gold Coast, you'll see people who still need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hello, Gold Coast. Nice yeah. to see you. So, uh, um, Eric's not coming up here for a holiday anytime soon. Not for a while. <laughs> <laughs> now, here we go. Um now, they've sold 47.8 million iPhones in the quarter. And that's up 10 million from the, last, from the same time last year. But people, the, the market was, or the, or the analysts, the Wall Street boffins were expecting more. Mm. You know, you sold 10 million phones this quarter more than you did the same quarter last year, 12 months ago, and not good enough. So they're marking their stock down. So, look, I believe that Apple's got a... They do have to. They they are getting a bit flat. Um, they haven't really come out with anything that's revolutionary for a while uh, see, since the iPad. I think I saw a story through the week that uh, old Timmy's put his he's put the hand into the cupboard and he's and he's tinkering with the Apple TV again. I read yes, well, that, I think that'll be the next one. It'll be the Apple TV or a set top box or something that's completely integrated. I think that's their next thing, and then that will take off and then people and then they'll integrate it with the phone and the iPad and instead of a remote you can do everything on your iPhone it'll be that sort of sort of integration and I think that's will be their next hit I wouldn't like to, um, I'd like to see a a uh, like a, a USB thing that uh, that you didn't need a set top box the USB thing because most TVs got USB USB Apple mm. TV you just plug it in never to be seen yeah it's all there yeah, yeah never it's to all be there. seen you're right because um a USB, for example, you know those dongles you get from Telstra? Yeah. Right? They've got Wi-Fi on it. You can put Wi-Fi in one of those, right? Mm. So you put a wi like the Apple little puck that you've got, like I've got, it's got a Wi-Fi on it. Yep. So you put that down to the same size as a dongle. Yeah, yep. Uh, you can fit, uh, what, a, what a flash storage, you can get up to 100 gigs on a flash storage, bang that in there. Yeah. Right? Just the software, Apple TV software, probably only takes up two gigs. Yep. Yep. You're right. Go Back life. of the TV, That's USB right. 3, yeah. Bob's your uncle, Wi-Fi, everything. It does everything. And plus, if it's USB, easy to take around to someone else's house. That's, how good is that? Well, that's probably why they won't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, might have a, it might have a registration code or something. You know, when you first register it, oh, you like, register it with your set. But who cares? Like, if you take it to someone's but house, who cares? it's still you. Yeah. You're not, like, it's you're still not, your content. Yeah. It's like them coming to your place. Yeah. And watching a movie on your TV. The fact that you bring your content to their TV should make no difference. But yeah. then again, Optus would argue with you that that's not right based but, on that court case last year. But now, look, I haven't got many details. This, I read this a little while ago. There's some company in the US doing the same thing with, that Optus was wanted to do. And they're going, this is, the, yeah. this is what we want to do. This is the future. This is where we're going. And it's, and they're going yeah, well, this is why Optus are dying, mate. Mm. You, I bet you any money Telstra jumps on this. In the next couple of years, and go yeah. Well, tells you we've got that the Foxtel mm. app now for the for the, the iPad. Yeah, yeah. Foxtel, no, no, okay. it's, you can walk Foxtel anywhere. You can go to America, for example. Take your iPad with you, Shane. Yeah. You got an internet connection. You got your Foxtel app. Bang! You can watch Foxtel. Yeah. The same channels that you would get at home, you can watch in the states. So it's not IP restricted, you don't think? No. Yeah. Right. Good. No, because it's tied to your account, I think. Tied to your account. That's yeah, right. right. If you're the account holder, off mm. Bob's your uncle. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Well, then you'd be able to watch the NRL over there. Woohoo! That's Sounds right. Like a good excuse to buy an iPad. Oh. There you go. Bingo. Get an iPad mini, mate. Go for your life. And what, uh, what else have you got there, Shane? What do you got tonight? What else? Uh, the other story that I might do is MySpace accused of stealing artist music. 
Uh, with the relaunch, uh, relaunch of MySpace, Monster has been accused of using music uh, of its artists without their permission. Basically, um, it goes on to say that they had an agreement with a um, a music, what's the word I'm looking for, record company yep. called Merlin in the UK, I think it is. Yeah. And obviously with the, the demise of uh, MySpace and then the reinventing of MySpace, in that time the music company is saying that the agreement lapsed right. and MySpace is saying, well, no, it didn't. Right. Um, and... <laughs> Bands, obviously, that are going through this record company are up in arms because they're sort of saying, well, yeah, you're stealing our content. We're not getting any yeah, yeah. we're yeah. not getting any cut or anything like that. So they're um, jumping up and down. Look, content is is where it's all at. And and content is – I've got a con- couple of content stories tonight. So leading on from that one is uh, – hang on, let me get a little uh, picture. I've got a little picture here just to show those on the video, like to, you know, keep you guys interested. Uh who remembers Kim.com, Mr. Dot Com? Oh, of course. So he's uh, so we talk while Shane he's just talking about the content. He's got a new, he's got he's launched a new site, um, and it's pretty much as he says, it's sticking the finger up to the U.S. authorities. His new site, the Cyber Locker. Um, yeah, that's what he, that's what he sort of nicknamed it. It's uh, Mega.co.nz. Now, by looking at it uh, this afternoon, it wasn't up. Uh, even though the story said this story says it was launched yesterday, so maybe it was just launched, but not um, not not live, not live. But you know, th- th- his concept I think has been around for a little while. The concept is all about um, he's still doing sharing, still doing the torrents, uh, but he's encrypting them. He's encrypting the the traffic. He's, he's encrypting the share, and only if you're if you've got the key. So say if I want to share something with Sh- uh, Eric and Shane. I give them it's the... up now. If you want to go and have a look. Oh, okay, Mega. Let me have a look. Let's let's go and have a bit of a bit of a look here. Mega dot co. You can put it on the stream. Hang up. Mega dot co. Dot uk. Oh no, dot nz, isn't it? Yeah, Mega dot co. Dot nz. Here we go. So let's have a look at this here. So, if I was to oh error code oh mepha I put in. That's another thing I don't like about. Windows, <laughs> you know, when you want to just uh, take a letter out of a word, you click on the word, and the whole word highlights, and you got, you got to muck around. Anyway, oh, well, I'm yeah, just full of Windows, windows tonight. Piece of, piece of garbage Windows. I'm full of that's windows. actually a function that I like. Not when you only want to do one letter. So, uh, <laughs> see, so he's, he's got the HTTPS. So, what? So anyway, so Shane, if we wanted to share a file between ourselves. Then I give uh, Shane and Eric the code, and then they'd be able to download the content. So pretty much, yeah. uh, he's saying that um, that that it's he's, a private locker, basically. Yeah, and and that what's different than sharing a book around? That I, I think that yeah, that's right. You give it to one person at a time. Yeah, I, I just think this is all right. He said he'd still comply with takedowns, but that's apparently just to um uh to. But the to, thing yeah. is, too, remember, look, if you had a DVD of a movie, and you came around and said, "Oh, I haven't seen that. Can I grab it?" So yeah, there off you go, mate. Yeah. Right? What's what's wrong with that? Because you can only give it to one person at a time, whereas this, you can give the key to multiple people. Well, yeah. I like that then. Well, you can. That's no, right. I'm not saying I don't like it. <laughs> but that, this is this has been around for a little while. I've seen this, this type of thing before, and, and you've got to be invited to the group and all this sort of stuff before you can... I, but I think that might be just private torrents where uh, you've got to be invited to the group before you can get the, the actual torrent, but this is... Everything's mm-hmm. encrypted, so no one knows what's going on. So I suppose... You know what they need now? They need like a Dropbox-type interface. <laughs> and it would, it oh, would be ace. Yeah, so... Um, yeah. so some... How long do you think it would be before everybody knew everybody's key and it just became useless? Oh, I don't know. I'd like... I don't know. All right, I don't know. Not every. I wouldn't give... Well, I wouldn't give Glenn my key, for example. He can get nodded. But if we were to... Sh- but you'd give the key to the state, like, for the torrent. Like, if you said, oh, listen, I've just recorded this show... On channel seven, I think you'll like it. I'll upload it for you, and you know, you give mm. me the key. Well, I don't. I can't see nothing wrong with that. I think that's okay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you're you're the only person watching. As long as you don't put it up at the pub and sell it. Yeah, yeah, and you can give the key to to whoever you like. But yeah, I suppose it's not, not public. And but anyway, uh, I'll give you some stats about all this. Then uh, we've got uh, .com said his new offering was launched, which is up now. It complied with the law and wanted. 
that attempts to take it down would be and warn that attempts to take it down would be futile. Uh, a sophisticated encryption system which will allow users to encode their files before they upload to the site's servers. Uh, they're located. Uh, dot com said, "Oh, his servers are located in New Zealand." So fine. That's going to be slow downloading. Huh? They're not too bad, I suppose. I've done a speed test of them. They're all right. Each file will then be issued a unique, sophisticated decryption key. As a result, the site operator will have access. Yep, so blah, blah, blah. Um, I think I've pretty much covered it all. The Motion Picture Association of America said, encrypting files alone would not protect .com from liability. We'll reserve final judgment until we have a chance to analyse this new project. <laughs> and oh, they're, they're after him already. They are after him. They are. And there's the picture I promised. I don't like it. That's what they're going to say. I don't like it. Of course they're not going to like it. Uh, all right. Who, whose turn is it? Eric. Yeah, mate. My turn. All right. Let me go. What are we? Um, Bad Apple. Steve Jobs threatened to sue competitor Palm for poaching employees. Well, you know, that's a bit silly because yes. is that everyone a... poaches everyone's employees. Let's face it. That's, that's how the world works. But the, yeah, poaching's not a... It's not a crime. No, no, it's not. But he didn't. Why he didn't like it? <coughs> Look Unless proved he did that it. Steve Jobs was a bit of a tyrant, according to this. <clears throat> Documents have surfaced showing that he threatened to sue smartphone smartphone <laughs> manufacturer Palm if it didn't stop poaching Apple employees. I mean, what can you? Do? How would that go? Yeah, would that go nowhere. How would that go? Oh, Your Honour, he's standing, standing in a, on a spot and like a belligerent child. Your Honour, but he took my tennis racket. <laughs> what a joke. That's Steve. Is there another tennis racket in the cupboard yet? You will play with that one. Now get out. But he, well, he, he would have poached, wouldn't he, himself? Of course. That's the whole point. <laughs> he poached, but he, no one was allowed to poach from him. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, that's what happens. He was, he was, you know, he's in a world of his own. Oh, look, it's Google, Apple, and uh, a couple others that get there in this court case now. Employees are suing them for um, loss of um, loss of income because Apple, Intel, and Google are currently the subject of a civil class action lawsuit where five employees are fighting for compensation for lost wages due to these gentlemen agreements between Apple, Intel, and Google that said we won't poach your employees if you don't poach ours. So these engineers are sitting in Intel. Um, and even if you went for a job at Apple, Apple would go, sorry, can't hire you. They'd well, hire you, someone else. Well, you know what? Right. If, so they wouldn't hire each other's employees. So you, you're stuck at, uh, you know, you can't get a pay rise. You can't, you know, so, I'm, so I'm, these guys, and rightly so, are suing. I'm hooking up tomorrow. tomorrow I'm hooking up to the American justice si- si- system, and I'm going to sue Apple because for lost wages. I'm suing them for lost wages because they have never poached me. So I'm suing. Lost There's no wages. reason for them to poach you. Yeah, but but doesn't matter. They haven't. So I'm suing them for lost wages. Oh, you sound like you sound like Nicola Roxon, mate. <laughs> He's just going to sue everybody for no reason. No, but that's that's the op, that's exactly the same as what Jobsy was doing. He's suing because yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's the same thing because like you know. So anyway. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You yeah, can't it's ridi- it you can't ridiculous. have it both ways. That's right. So in the end, he was saying, "Well, we'll take whoever we want. You can't take our employees, but." Let's just have a gentleman's agreement say, let's agree not to take each other's in. Because that's collusion. It's basically collusion. It's price fixing. Mm. What is it? What are right? they... You're fixing the price of your engineer. What did they call Jobsy? He had a, a uh, distorted vision field of vision or something? Some... Uh, this, uh, reality distortion that's field. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think it was in, I think it was ramped up that day. <laughs> oh yeah, that day. He was having a bad day. It was Look, having... I like Jobsy. He, he, he was a, he's a genius. Um, you know, but some of his behaviour, this one is classic. It's like, come on, mate. It's a competitive world out there. Yeah. Oh, he probably just throws it out there to see what he can get away with. Like, why not? Why not? Well, that's it. That's that's it. That's the it. You, you, you know, see what you can get away yeah. with. No one knows where he lives. Oh, except that guy that broke in. Well, they do now. <laughs> All right, Shane, what else have you got? In, uh, a little... That was a good segue, Glenn. I'll actually go with that story. Good. <laughs> Jobs house burglar gets seven years sentence. Oi, uh, seven yeah. years. Seven years. Uh, Kieran McFarlane, 35, was arrested in August last year by officers, um, basically after he broke into uh, Jobsy's house and a couple of other houses in the area. Um, finally went to court, and um, yeah, long story short, he's been sentenced to seven years. It doesn't say whether he's um, entitled to any sort of parole or anything beforehand. Um, why does it say there why that why it was 
well, such a severe sentence. Like, you, you, cause you, you, no doubt you'd get an other little break and enters and they're not going to get seven years. Why, why? Yeah, if... I'd say it's probably high profile. Of the, um, well, there's that. And also it says here, McFarlane admitted to burglary under questioning by Palo Alto police and said that he had stolen from other houses in the San Francisco oh, so area. So it was yeah, probably yeah. Accumula accumulation. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Exactly. Well, see, so yeah, anyway, so they should. Better than getting your hands cut off. All right. Now, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, uh, I've got one. Now, oh, there's, there's more. Uh, there's another Australian political party that has entered the fray. It's the, the Pirate Party. The Pirate Party. <laughs> you got to turn up on Election Day with a patch. <laughs> the, the, apparently, the Pirate Party Australia hopes to field candidates in every state and territory after the party won the right to contest its first ever Australian election. Uh, now, party president David Campbell says, we're looking at hopefully two candidates for each of the eastern states and at least one in the territories. Uh, so the problem we have right now is the Labor government continues to push policies of censorship and surveillance. We need to push back. I think we, this, this, this is another word. It's freedom of speech party. That's what you should be having. Mm. Yeah, but that, that'll, um, that'll be good for a laugh. <laughs> well, what happened there? <laughs> They're not going to do anything, but they'll be good for a laugh. You're right. Yeah, 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 just something happened there. No, oh, okay. Yeah, freedom of speech party is pirate party is probably a misnomer because they're really arguing against freedom of speech and and uh, civil liberties. Yeah, that's right, and they, I think, yeah, and and torrents. <laughs> yeah, torrents. Yeah, yeah. There's that. <laughs> and that that little thing. Yeah, yeah. we want we want uh, we want to push back. And oh, yeah, there is a little torrent policy out the back. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, what, yeah. Well, that's funny thing is if they had a press release saying, and you can torrent our policies from this site. <laughs> <laughs> they just gave you. You can do, you just down, what's that? What's that torrent software called? Um, BitTorrent. Yeah. BitTorrent. You can BitTorrent our policies from this on this link. Yeah, that's pretty funny. That'd be hilarious. You, you, if you're listening, pirate party, that's my idea. Yeah, you can torrent uh, our speeches and everything. Yeah, good on you. Good that's on right. <laughs> well, it saves uh, saves uh, bandwidth, doesn't it? So they might be a small yes. party, not a lot of money. But then they've, they've, yes. got, they've got a dot .org. So I suppose they, because they're a political party, they must get some sort of assistance from the government or from, from They do. Us. They Each each political party um, from the Electoral Commission gets a certain amount of funding. Yeah, depending, um, on, depending how many on how many members, members or... Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not a... sure how it works, but... Uh, now, yeah. um, what what else have you got, Eric? You got anything else? There? I have got. Um, Sorry, I don't have you. Apple, your last Apple right, story. Though. Yeah, that's all right. Last Apple story. Apple sees highest growth in China, revenue in China up sixty-seven percent. So, and their shares go down. So, work that out. And they haven't even signed, um, what you call it, um, China's the biggest mobile. telco yet, which they're yeah. about to do. China Mobile. Or, I don't can't remember what the name name is, but apparently there's how many billion? There's this a billion people in China, and I think. They have 500, 500 million customers, China of Mobile. Yeah. Right. That, so, yeah, and, yep. and, and, you know, as soon as the iPhone goes there, it's ka ching, ka ching, really, let's face it. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's um, right. During today's quarterly results call for the first quarter, Peter Oppenheimer mentioned that the company focused on establishing a new operating segment of Greater China, including mainland Hong Kong, uh, mainland China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Uh, we have China was responsible for six point eight billion dollars of Apple revenue, and overall revenue was up sixty seven percent. Is that that's is pretty that good? A year, sorry, was that a year? In the, uh, oh, because quarter, just for the quarter. Yeah, right. Jeez, seven billion yeah. from one country. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of moolah. And this is before China Mobile gets in on the act, you know, selling iPads with a data plan, for example, mm. not just the phones. You've got all the other stuff there. And they're opening stores all the time. So, look, as far as Apple's profits are for the future, they've got, you know, they've got other countries they've still got to get into. Eastern Europe is another one that they're slowly getting into. So, profit-wise, they'll be okay. Mm. But product-wise, they might be flat if they don't do something you know, mm. in the next couple of it's, years. It's like, remember, like, you could probably uh, assimilate, uh, the, the, say, the wealth of Apple, say, say that, that that was a person. Like, remember 20 years ago, you know, when Bill Job, Bill Bill Gates was the, the richest man in the world. Uh, it, it was, there was a story going around that, you know, if he's walking down the street, he drops 40 grand out of his pocket. He's more, he's better and it's more cost effective for him to keep going than to bend down and pick it up. 
That's right, because at the time it takes to, to to look around, bend down, pick it up, put it back in his pocket. Well, yeah. he's um, yeah, he, he's he, gonna make, he's gonna lose that's, more. That's right. That's that's insanity, isn't it? That's insanity. I just want to be. Yeah. I just wish I was behind him when he drops it. Well, I hope that um, <laughs> he's uh, yeah, he's the forty grand. He drops it, and I'm I'm around. That's right. Uh, now, last last comment on that. In the in the last quarter alone, they had they they generated an extra. Twenty-three billion dollars in cash. So if they opened with one hundred and twenty billion. They now got one hundred and forty-three billion mm. in one quarter, three months. What are they going to do with it all? Give it to me oh. when I sue them for not poaching me. <laughs> that's right, exactly. That's it. I'm onto them. Yeah, me and you, Eric. Me, you, and Shane. We're going to yeah, sue them tomorrow. That's it. Oh, all right, just one more, last one. Yes. It's not an Apple story per se. Um, iTunes U. We all know about iTunes U, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Well, Stanford University has just has, has reopened their Stanford um, um, their, their develop which got developing apps for iPhone and iPad for free. It'll run from January 22 to March 28, and you need to sign up on iTunes U before February 1, and it's free. So, how to develop on iOS via Stanford University, which is a well-regarded university, um, for free. Well, that's very good. Just before I switch back to your photo, I'm just writing that down. So that was... <laughs> it's on my notes. I emailed you my notes, Glenny. Yes, okay. But I'll just write it down so I remember to go and have a look. So iTunes, yep. you... IOS. Just click on the link there. Yep. Sign up Sign up on Piazza. Yep. It's just a link of you know, their education provider. And you go, it'll ask your details, iTunes account, blah, 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 whatever. And you download all their videos and all their lectures and everything, all free, how to develop on the iOS cool. 6 platform. Nice. nice. That'd be uh, worth oh. a look when I get time. Uh, Shane, what else are you... You got anything else down there? Over there in Perth, sunny Perth? Um, the only other thing that I had that... Um, oh, there's an Apple story, but I'll leave that for Eric. Um, there's another one where it says Australia's new wave is surfing at home. Basically, someone's done a study or um, probably not like a university study, but just a regular kind of study where they're like an anecdotal thing where according to new research suggests Australians are tu tuning into a nation of nerds, albeit ones with more spare time on the hands. Basically they're saying that um, because obviously technology is getting uh, more efficient and processes are more efficient, we're getting more and more uh, spare time. The average Aussie will save more, have more than 78 hours a week uh, at leisure this year, up more than 90 minutes compared to 2000. And um, they're basically saying that they're spending that doing nerdy kind of stuff rather than doing energetic, yeah, you know, okay. running around the park kind of things. Well, I suppose a look, staycation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so look, that's probably that's probably true. That's um, probably true. I don't know about extra free time. I wish I had some extra free time. It'd be nice. But uh, yeah, yeah. Look, the kids are going back to school next week, and uh, yeah, the the t the free time of tablet playing has come to an end. Yeah, it's a shame that if that's the case, it's a real shame. You know, you've got to get out there. You're all going to be obese by the time they're 30 otherwise. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Run around. Cause like we Run were, around. Yeah, because uh, we had one, and then we bought that little one from Domain, and so now they've each got one. And I just, I just, re just not didn't realise, but I just saw over the, you know, the past week or so that that's all they, if they're not out doing something, if they're at home, that's what they're doing. So I want to. I just control it. I just take it off them. Yeah. So, so you're not yeah. no tablet at breakfast. Oh, uh, you know, and you go out there, you play, you have lunch, play with your brother or sister. Get out there, you know, and at, if when you have lunch, you can sit down with it while you're having lunch, and then you give it back. Yeah. And then when you come in in the afternoon, you can have it back. Yeah, that's right. We're only playing games on it, but uh, and also I'm going to download yeah. some educational stuff too. So there. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Australian government asks for more Google users' data. So there you go. Uh, the yeah. What do they want now? Yeah. Everything. Well, every anything. For the July to December 2012 period, 584 requests were made for disclosure of user data for Google accounts or services. Says no way. Yes, yes. What do they want? Uh, well, anything they can get. So, and that's from a tra the Google's own transparency report. So, for 2012, Australian government authorities made a total of 1,107 requests for user data and 1,552 for account details. The Australian governments are the seventh most frequent requester of user data in the world, and number nine... Behind who? Behind China, 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 <laughs> China, and China. And China. And seven and a half was China. It is possible and legal to do so, 
well, obviously, because they've, they've made it legal. Google notifies users whose data and account de- details have been requested by government agencies. So, yeah. Well, they haven't notified me, so I'm good. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. What is available, as you may well ask? I don't know. Do they go dis- disclosure of user data? Emails? Emails? Well, I don't know. Can they access emails under subpoena? I suppose they could. I can access anything. If it's accessible, they can access it. They can, they, yeah, like, uh, yes, they can, they can go go to town. They can get whatever they want. So that's uh, pretty scary there. Now, what else have I got? Oh, don't forget, Windows 8 pricing is rising next week. Uh, Microsoft is set to end the promotional pricing for its Windows 8 operating system at the end of January and obviously raising prices from 1st of February. Now, presently, users can download a copy of Windows 8 Pro for 40 bucks with a limit of one to- one-time upgrade per PC and a maximum limit of five licenses per customer. What? What? With a limit. Presently, users can download a copy of Windows 8 Pro for $40. Cool. With a limit of one upgrade per PC. Cool. And a maximum limit of five licenses per customer. What? Why are they limiting it? Oh, they, don't, they, they don't want to sell them. I don't know. Why would they? Yeah, I don't know we don't want they, to make any money. Why would they limit? That must, I don't know. I don't know. I'd get, look, if, go into the show notes and have a look at, if you follow that article if you've got the same query as me. I don't know why they would be limiting licenses to a customer. All I know is that, look, I've put Windows 8 on my machine this week, had a few little dramas with it. It's sort of, a, it's, you know how you log in with your user account? You can actually yeah. log in now with your Microsoft account. So therefore, the light, the Microsoft Live account. That's right. That's right. So then, yeah. all your settings and blah blah blah. This transfers across, yeah. That's right. So I think that's a good thing uh, about about the Windows 8. I can see what they're trying to do. It is a little bit cumbersome on a desktop without touch, and you'll yep. probably find that you're going to have to, well, like me, is Google Windows 8 keyboard shortcuts and uh, to find out, you know, how to do things a bit faster. Because uh, I've got two mm. screens, and you know, so from going from the top left to the top right, you know, it takes time to go across two screens. Uh, oh God, yeah, <laughs> God, God help us. Uh, I installed Office 2013. Yep, yeah, lot different. Everything's a bit different. Uh, I installed, so they've got apps now. It's a lot faster, isn't it? It's a lot faster. It is a lot faster, and because I put an SSD in as well. So it is... On oh, point. did you? You got that out of the box, did I you? I did get it out Finally of the box. Finally, unpacked that. I unpacked that and <laughs> installed it, and it's going great. But uh, I have kept the Windows 7 drive as well, which I'm using now because of the issues. I couldn't use do the podcast with Windows 8 until I figure them out. <laughs> but, Fair uh, enough. Yes, I am my biggest bugbear about Windows 8. Well, no, not really about Windows 8, but uh, I cannot get my version of Myob to load, which is only two years old. And my I have told me pretty much you're on your own. On Windows 8, yeah, Windows 8 doesn't yep. support anything. Well, I it's th- shocking. Yeah, but my, th- that's the only thing I couldn't install was MyOB. Everything else. Well, you got to, you know, you got to, you got to look at uh, MyOB's position too. Um, they probably got the software development kit yesterday. Well, that's their problem. You know. Well, no, no, it's been out. Well, no, well, the, my, it, the Windows 8's been out for ages, but they didn't release a, the, the development kit for months. Yeah. So how can you develop products for Windows if you don't have the kit? Yeah, but, the, but I don't know. Like, well, everything else seems to work. Like, you know, everything else that I've got seems to work. I haven't had any issues. Uh, Skype is a lot, little bit different for some reason. And now this is an, uh, this is an issue, I believe. Uh, it comes as an app, so it doesn't sort of sit on your desktop. It's an app which loads up. Uh, but I can't see that it, it doesn't notify you of events if you've minimised the app. <laughs> I can't get that to work right. either. So right. I don't know how that works. So maybe, don't know, don't know. But anyway. Uh, just a quick one. Did you get an email during the week from Louise Shazik? I did get an, I did, got a few emails and I think that was one of them. Yes. About the Kogan Amazim Sim 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 thingy? Uh, yes, yes. But I, I yeah, haven't got followed that. that one up yet. Have you, have yeah. you got a follow-up for that? I haven't got a follow-up for it because... Um, I just read it and I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, I don't know if he wants a comment on that, but um, it seems like um, the well, sims that he's getting from um, Kogan are reasonable in speed yes. in respect of download. Yep, yep. And so um, 
but, but we'll, we can talk about that next yeah, week. Yeah, we'll have a look at that because uh, we, we did have some issues before the recording tonight and that's sort of blown everything a bit out of control. Yeah. So uh, we'll have a look yeah. at that. Uh, it's still in my inbox, so don't fear that we'll miss it. <laughs> All right, Shane, what else have you got? Um, that is it, I believe. I know right. no, they've got one more. Um, Apple Launch 3, I was we talking earlier about you know, them not having products or not being sort of any, you know, re- revolutionary. Apple, there's a room going around Apple to launch three iPhones, including a 4.8-inch iPhone called the iPhone Math, but then they reckon that's just like a, um, like a code name. Apple could be working on... The calculator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apple oh, could be uh, working on... No, nah, math. Hmm. Math as in mathematics. Working on three new iPhone launches this year, including the iPhone 6, an iPhone with 12 megapixel camera, a bigger 4.8 inch 4.8 inch iPhone, and the latest rumours are calling that that phone the iPhone Math, as in mathematics. Oh, and um, it's a new calculator. They say, that, yeah, they go on to say that the re- the report is um, based around a firm in China, a, a, a um, what do they call it, a newspaper in China, the China Times this week, translated by Brightwire Sites, Upstream Supply, so it's another supply chain kind of rumour where they're basically saying that Apple is apparently putting more orders in and therefore that means that they're going to make XYZ product. Yeah, well, well I think well, I'll just take a wait and see on that. I think, uh, you know, you got Sharp out there saying they're, they're dropping orders for the, t- the the screens and all this sort of stuff, but you don't well, know. Well, because they've probably on. got different size screens that they need. Yeah, you don't know what goes on. I, I can't. If they're dropping, although that makes sense, right? If they're dropping orders for the normal size screen, it's because they're going to order Something four point inch inch screen exactly. Mm, don't know. Well, well, I'm sure I'm sure we'll find out in uh, in the fullness of time. <laughs> um, yes. Correct. Now, I wish. Uh, I think Eric wishes he lives in Blacktown because. <laughs> no, I don't actually. They can have all the fibre they bloody well want. The M- knock yourself, <laughs> knock yourself out. So looks uh, as, as per usual. It seems that the 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 rollout is following the well worn path of um, labour seats. seats. That's right. Yeah. So MBN Co is finalising construction of the M of the, the in Blacktown fibre optic cable hauled into completed fibre pits. If it doesn't get vandalised first. Well, this, this is what you got to watch out for. I don't think I don't think Eric's going on a holiday to Blacktown either. Gold Coast Blacktown. No, I'm not welcome. Out. Not welcome there. It's a, um, select homes and businesses in Blacktown are expected to be connected to the MBN as early as July. And federal member for Greenway, Michelle Rowland, attended the, the rollout. I don't know, I don't the roll know. out. Yeah, alongside Blacktown City Council members. Uh, Roland said the need for high-speed broadband in Blacktown area was particularly strong. Sydney siders like you, Eric. They've got no money. Yeah. What's strong for what? Well, they want it. Doesn't mean that they can get it. They can't. Look, I, I want a Ferrari. Doesn't mean I can, I can afford it. Give me a break. But I think, but doesn't, isn't it going to replace all the traditional internet services? So you have to get, get on the MBN sooner or later anyway. Uh, well, you have to sooner or later. That's the beauty about the government monopolies, is right? Mm. So Sydney siders like Eric can check out when their street <laughs> is slated to receive MBN by going to the MBN rollout map. So even oh, I've already street... tried it. I got a big red dot. No, no plans to roll out in your area um, because we hate you because you vote liberal. I said, I said, Pitt, uh, I only thinking of Eric the other day actually for some reason, and uh, I, I looked up his uh, his his uh, address in the MBN map and there was nothing for him. Did it come out and slap you in the face and just start laughing nothing. at you? <laughs> <laughs> start pointing and laughing. Didn't I screenshot it and send it to you? Yeah, oh, no, I don't, I don't know. Did you? No, I oh, yeah, you did. You I did. You did. You did. But yeah, so because uh, I wanted because I think I looked at uh, I, I was up at uh, Narang. I looked at them and I think they were on the map. Then I looked at my house. I'm on the map, which uh, work starts in 2000. And I think this year in July. I think, or is it next year? But then look at Eric where he is. Uh, nothing. <laughs> it's got no. nothing. you got nothing down there. Nothing. 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 Nothing at all. Actually, you've got a date. You've got a date of uh, commence from June 2014, which is next year, which is a long time. Mm. Now, I'll type in my address here. Um, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you got but nothing. if I do Blacktown, oh, 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 oh there... They'll, they'll be the going, West. you beauty, we've got, we've got bloody, you know, whatever, 
we've got broadband, but uh, oh, yeah, you got twenty bucks on it. Yeah. So the whole of the country is screaming fast, and then the city, the city, city of Sydney is just yeah. ADSL two. And that's when we had his, we had this conversation a few months ago. Why don't they put it first out in university towns? Yeah, and yep. and, and and technology hubs, you know, because every be every city's got technology hubs. Yep. Now we've got one here at Macquarie uh, or North Ride. You've got yours at Rabina, and I'm sure in Perth they've got a an area that's really techno centred. Yeah, you know where all the telcos are, or the you know the electronics companies want. That's where they should be rolling it out. Yeah, ours is over that. Yeah, right next to Rabina. I don't care what seat rates. it's in, whether it's in a you know whether it's in a Labor seat or a Liberal seat, it wouldn't matter. Techno Hub, but no, we're putting it at Riverston or Penrith. Okay, so four, four more areas across Australia can now switch the uh, MBN with around 9,000 premises now available to sign up. The areas include Coffs Harbour, Toowoomba, Hobart and Gungalin in ACT. Yeah, Labor, Labor, Labor and Labor. MBN has started construction in 10 new locations around Australia. Let's see if this ticks all the... the, the, the Why do they just start them all at once? What's this sort yeah, of... I don't, don't understand that either. Mate, Maitland... Labor. Frankston? Labor. <laughs> Do you know or are you just guessing? No, I know my seats, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Ashmore in Queensland? Oh, no. Whereabouts is that? That's Gold Coast. That might have... Labor. You know, yeah, I don't know. Gawler? Don't know what that is. South Australia? South Australia, isn't it? Yeah, don't uh, know. Northam, Western Australia? Northam. Northam, yeah. Is that Labor? Uh, it's a country town. Labor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Claremont, Claremont and South, Launceston and Civic in the ACT. And I know wherever uh, PA is, our listener and watcher every week who lives in Canberra, it's nowhere near him either. He misses out by about a 15-minute drive. Yeah, yeah, because they know. I re- you know, I've got a theory. Whatever your postcode is, that's the year it goes in. <laughs> yeah, <fair laughs> <right>. <laughs> So your mine's going out in the year two thousand and seventy-three. Oh, well, what's up? Uh, uh, isn't Shane's Western Australia like eight thousand and something? Oh, you're you're Six. gone, mate. Oh, yeah, he's you're star, you'll be having Star Trek Enterprise landing on your backyard before you get even before you even get fibre. Just so there's yeah. no more Mayan calendars out, otherwise you will never. That's see right. Them. Now well, that's oh, that's about it for me. Has anyone else got anything? No, I'm good. No, that's all. Everyone. No, I'm good. The only last yeah. thing I th- I uh, have got is I try to end on a I don't know sometimes on a little I don't know funny one but the well not funny but the original Batmobile remember the old Batman's Batmobile uh, has been sold for four point two million at auction US the Batmobile Ooh. used by Adam yeah. West in the original TV series of Batman has been sold for uh, four point two million as a, at a US auction the car was bought by Rick Champagne. Oh, oh, well, there you go. A, lo- a logistics company owner from Phoenix, Arizona. I wonder if that's his real name, Champagne. That's oh, a- it's got to be. I don't, his, his real name was probably Budweiser. He <laughs> yeah. changed it. What a Champagne name. That's great. <laughs> champagne comedy. All right. Champagne budget too, by the sounds of it. Yes. All right. Well, that's about brings us to the end of the show. Um, hopefully, I don't know, that, that still went for nearly, nearly just on under an hour, so that wasn't too bad. And that's we were- all right. And no echo. No, and we and we were flying. We were flying. Yep. So yep. that's good. That's good. Oh, and Shane, uh, you got a have you got a little um, on this day just two for us just to end. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, let me scroll down. And, and I wasn't Shane's, sure what they were going to do them or not. While, while Shane's Ooh. looking for those, it is Australia Day on Monday. So is it Monday? What's today? Thursday. No, the holiday is Monday. It's on Saturday. It's the holiday is on Monday. On the twenty sixth of January. So I uh, hope everyone has a happy Australia Day and whatever you do, be safe. And don't get in any I'll be working. Trouble. Oh, why? Oh, you're doing a server reroute or something. Doing that rollout thing, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, did you have a couple of on this days? What's yep. happened? Good to go. On, this on January 18, 1911, clear the deck. 1911, a Curtis biplane becomes the first aeroplane to perform a landing on a ship. Ooh, um, on a ship. Uh, a ship, or ship or a... as in oh, Navy ship. Not a, not a New Zealand, mate. Uh, right, okay. No. <laughs> My Australian accent. Must have had a uh, back. Obviously, that was the precursor to the aircraft carrier. Yes, right. indeed. Uh, and Martin Luther King was born during the week. Well, his his yeah. the anniversary of his birth was during yeah, the nice. week. Yeah, nice. Um, I think that I mean, I've lost the date, but I have and a just a, a trivia the moment. The uh, the presidential inauguration is always the day before Martin Luther King Day. 
Yeah, right. Mm. There, you go. there you go. Are the elections mm. in the US on the same day every... No, they're not the election, the inauguration. So they have elections in November. Yep. November 11 every every four years, or in four, or I can't remember exactly. Mm. But the inauguration is always January 23. What's that? Is or that whatever, Arm- 22. Armistice Day? November 11? Well, it must be the fourth then. Yeah, right. Okay. They wouldn't have yeah, November the fourth. Yeah, um, so a question while we're talking about that: Why did he have to go through the motions of being re-inaugurated when he was the president already? <clears throat> uh, it's just their system. You got to, you know, you you get voted in. You know, like when if um, here if you win it, like Howard went and won an every you know election from whatever ninety seven to two thousand and seven, but uh, when they win the election, they go to the governor general and get sworn in. This is a similar thing. Mm. Yeah, uh, regard, even if you're already there, you've got to get sworn in because you've got new cabinet, you've got new, you know, president's the same, but a lot of time they've got different um, cabinet members or parliamentarians, so they all get sworn in at the same time. Yeah. So this is, but for this guy, I think it's just more the inauguration of the, just the president. And then I think a, a one or two weeks after that, or, or just on that day, he announces his, um, his team. Right. So it's just, it's just their system. Yeah, nice. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Well, that just about brings us, well, it does bring us to the end of the show, actually. So thank you for sticking with us and thanks for downloading, watching, however you do it. Uh, just thank you. So you can get the video of the show is on the webpage, aussietechheads.com.au. Just go down to the front of the page and uh, on the front page there and click on play, whatever you want to do there. Uh, iTunes for the audio. And what else is there? There's the the hosting, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. Um, yeah, heaps of stuff there. Go and check out the webpage. There's show notes. Uh, there's uh, there's a new section in there called tidbits where we've got uh, people that can you can, you can write in if you want to write a little blog, a little story review. We'll put it up there for you, and you can see your name in lights. How good does that sound? Whoa! All right, so that's that's all there is. So happy Australia Day for Saturday. Have a good day off on Monday, and we'll see Eric, Shane, and Will hopefully with a new system. Next week, next Thursday night for another episode of Aussie Tech Ed. See you, Shane. See you, Eric. And see you, mate. See you, everyone else. See you, everyone. Bye, all. Bye-bye.